Tamas. Uh, quick overview. So pretty much what Tamas is. Okay. Uh, when I go over this, like I said, this is going to be an overview of the Tamas program. It's not going to be an in-depth class to replace the formal training that you uh, have, that you need to have your Tamas managers attend. Okay. Um, <clears throat> also, please hold all your questions until the end, and then we'll get started. But Tamas, everybody knows, it's the ammunition ordering system. It's basically the system of record for ammunition. So this is what we're going to cover, real down and dirty. What's TAMIS? What are the requirements, authorizations, forecasting, your E581 reports, and then just some common issues and trends that um, I have been seeing at the 807th. So I won't make anybody read. I know that uh, reading is fundamental, but uh, I won't make you read out loud. But again, like I said, TAMIS is the system of record for ammunition. Fair enough? As you'll notice, I threw this in here. So everybody should know the cycle, all right? Um, and it, instead of consumption, what we can do right there is expenditures. We can put that in that slot as well. So this is the, the TAMIS homepage. And when you get in there, this side right here this is pretty much what you have at a, at a glance, quick snapshot, okay, that can get you rolling. And without diving too, too far into it, so you've got your snapshot of what's going on here, you've got alerts and notifications here, which is very important at the manager level because when you go in, instead of searching for files, um, it's right there. It's one click away and you, you're into the report or action that you need to be in. <clears throat> Over on the right hand side, you got your help, your how to, um, training. So if you go in here, if you just go to the Tamus website, go to training, um, you can actually hit the class schedule and it'll pull up what USARC has for scheduled classes. Now, um, the class that I went to was actually in Milwaukee, and I think it was the 352, right? I'm sorry. The 452 actually put it on and hosted it. So if you do have a lot of um, users that need this class, pretty much all you do is contact the POC in there and get them to schedule you a class. They will come out to your location, set up everything, and training happens, you're good to go. Okay, so we're going to go into the requirements next. So pretty much your requirements are how much you think you're going to need. And that's based off of last year's FY and the STRAC. So the STRAC is pretty much the guidance that Big Army says, okay, well, per soldier, per, um, per range qualification, this is how many, how many rounds you're expected to use to train that soldier. So, and like it says right there, this is your best guess at the ammunition you need based off the STRAC and the previous FY. <clears throat> with the STRAC, they're standard and they're st strategic. Pretty much we deal with the standard. So, and, and again, the, the big thing right here is that this is not forecasting, okay? This is basically a wish list. Fair enough? Got a little click, Kathy. Okay, so step one is you hit your requirements. You put that in, submit that up, and that all goes up to USARC and, then, and they push down the authorizations. The authorizations are pretty much what you're going to get, what you're authorized for the FY. So pretty much, I, the way that I think about it too is um, monetary, things that way. So let's say that you're a parent, okay, you're USARC, you're Big Army, you've got $50 to spend on five kids, pretty much, right? So each of these five kids are going to dances. Okay, so theoretically, each one should get $10, right? It's not really how it works. So let's say your 18-year-old spends more at her dance than your 13-year-old because she's got to get the fancier dress. So pretty much, that's the requirements. Her requirements are higher, so that way 
the authorizations get offset and they trickle down. Okay? Make sense? So again, there's a big paragraph for you. All right. So pretty much the most important slide is this one right here. So forecasting. If you know forecast for the FY, and pretty much what happens is, so requirements get put in, authorizations get set down. If you do not forecast, let's say, um, after your YTB, when you have your ranges and your scheduled AT events where you're going to need that ammo, the ammo, excuse me, then what's going to happen is either 807th or USARC is going to say, hey, you're not forecasted that ammo, you're not going to need it. So if it's still unforecasted, they're going to take it and they're going to give it to somebody else who can use it. So the biggest thing that I can stress is forecast your ammo. Okay? So a lot of best practices, I would say, is if your downtrace units aren't forecasting, you need to forecast either for them or you take that amount of ammo, you place it in September. Because what you can do is you can actually decrease the amount of ammunition that is forecasted for those months. But as soon as you hit that 90-day lockout period, that three-month three out, you can't add to it. You can take away, but you can't add to it. So it goes back to the fact that I'd rather have too much money in the bank and then take away from it than not have enough money in the bank and now I'm broke for the next month. Okay? So again, you can see that it's based on authorizations, not the requirements, because requirements, again, is just an estimate. The authorization is what you get, what you're going to have. So the unforecasted ammo, excuse me, it's not that you can't use it, okay? And USARC might not always take it away, but there's a high probability that it will get taken away if you don't forecast it. Um, now there are exceptions when, when you see it, if you have unforecasted ammo, uh, UFR, unfor unforecasted ammo request, you can send that up. And if we have ammo across the board that we can uh, sub-authorize down to you, we will. Okay, as long as it's documented and we have the paper trail. Fair enough? Okay, so we started out with the requirements, authorizations, forecast. Now we're going to talk about our checks, our E581s. And pretty much um, this can go down to your company level right here. So a very important it should be approved in Tamas no later than seven days before the draw date. Okay? So let's say that your range is on drill weekend, right? But you want that ammo before. So let's say the 8th is your weekend. You want to pull that the 6th. You should have it no later than the 6th or seven days before the 6th. So you're going to actually pick it up the previous month, which gets into your forecasting uh, it gets a little tricky because you want to forecast that, in that situation, the month prior. So it's all about numbers and finding out when you want to pick it up. That's the key right there, when you're going to pick up your ammo. And right here, this is just an example, 581. So biggest thing right there, no hard copies. They're pretty much irrelevant now. All is done in the Tama system. We print it out. We send it to the ASP. We, we call it good. So the reports that we run um, up here, these are the two main ones that I deal with. If you go to the range and you picked up 1,000 rounds, but you only used 900, you still got 100 rounds sitting there. So if you go back to money, if you have $1,000, you spend 900, you want that $100 back, right? So instead of just having it sit at the ASP, you're going to reforecast it out. Okay? So, but again, I find out that people, people will take more notice if you use it in monetary values. Because that way, they understand it's just not a thousand rounds. Okay, psst, let's roll with it. If it's a thousand dollars that's sitting there, yeah, they're going to take it. Or somebody's going to take it for them.
This is a quick snapshot of the 807's um, summary report. Okay, the, the biggest thing that I look at is right here. And I know that most of you can't see it, but that's the unforecasted amounts. Okay, so again, USARC will look at this also and they'll say, hey, you got $1,000 sitting there. It's not even placed in a, you're not even gonna put it somewhere to buy something. I'm gonna take that. Units are gonna use it. People are gonna use it. <clears throat> Your forecast UIC report. This again tells me if the brigades are forecasting their ammo. Okay? And it'll tell me which months they're forecasted in. Fair enough? So like I said before, if you know that you're having ranges in, in certain months, why not just go in and plug the numbers in? Forecast them early. That way, again, you've got it locked in. Nobody's going to take that from you. Okay? If you need more ammo and you're uh, 90 plus days out, yeah, put more in. But it, the problem is, is that I see a lot of requests that come in within that 90 day window to increase and it's locked out. It's locked out at my level and USARC is pretty much saying, nope, that's what you're gonna get. So there's ways around it. You can actually go coordinate with the ASP or a different unit. So basically, writing a uh, postponed check is pretty much what you're doing, okay? So don't get set on the idea that there's no way nothing's gonna happen. There is ways, it's not the preferred method, and it's just, it's coordination is what it is. And that's, I think, one of the biggest takeaways from this event is communication and follow-up. As long as you're communicating with the ASP, your different units, and you're following up, hey, they're more than willing to work with you. So the requirements, the requirements come basically from last FY and the STRAC. And again, you've got to forecast. If you don't forecast, things aren't going to happen. Chances are you're going to be behind the curve and your ranges, hey, you may or may not get some ammo. Okay? Do yourselves a favor, do your units a favor, and forecast. Okay? I can't stress that enough. Mass Army Panel, let's talk about that. And then once you, once you do, once you expend all your ammo, make sure you reconcile. The reports need to go up and we need to make sure that we get credit for the expenditures that we're using. So let's say you got plussed up, you got 1,000 rounds, and you actually blew through 1,000 or 1,200, hey, put that on there, because we can use that in the next, next FY's requirements, so we can get you a plus up, possibly. So TAMIS training, uh, make sure that your, your operators get trained, not only as the TAMIS managers, but also at the, the unit level, your, your operators, your go-to guys, your, your 581 uh, requesters, okay? Make sure that they do it right and they get trained. Um, so as this last one right here, operational load ammo. So there's, there's two, basically two systems within the system. So you've got the, the training ammunition, which we use for the ranges and ATs and everything that way. And then you've got the operational load ammunition which is for your arms room. Um, basically, it's gonna stay on the property book, okay? Now, the biggest heartache and frustration for me lately is I know everybody got the tasker to, to send up your um, increased amounts for your guard ammo, your guard room ammo, okay? So USARC was telling me that it's a G4 function. <coughs> okay, Roger, got it. But at the same time, G4 doesn't want to play, so I'm kind of in a bind. So what do I do? So with the help of some of the staff at the 807th, we pushed, we got access to the operational load. Well, there's two systems with that. You got the requirements and you got your authorizations. So we went in, we, we put in all of your requirements, put them in, but now they're not approved yet. So we can't authorize you that additional ammunition that you need. Uh, so again, without getting into great detail, that's one of the frustrations is access within the system itself. So um, it's frustrating, but we're working through it, and hopefully um, with the help of USARC, we can get it taken care of. But again, 
it's the communication, it's the follow-up. So, but just know that we're working towards getting everybody's operational load ammunition sent out as soon as possible.